a local's guide to Venice Beach, California. I'm Chris, this is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, entertaining. And in this video, I'm gonna be giving you a local's perspective to Venice. And if you're wondering which local, it's this local. Chris! Hey, Tyrone, how's it going? What are you doing here? Yeah, good to see you. You wanna join me for this video today? Sure, why not? All right, well, fortuitous timing. So if Tyrone looks familiar, it's because I first met Tyrone in the Smorgasbord video that I have Smorgasbord LA. He's also an actor here in Hollywood. He's an LA local, and this is one of his favorite places that he's gonna show us around. So Tyrone, what do you like about Venice? Well, Chris, aside from the beautiful weather, the palm trees, the beach, and all that, there's a lot of places you could check out here. Very eclectic. There's a lot of like art. There's a lot of sports games. You can go over here, play some handball. You can do face painting. You can check out almost everything here in one location. It's really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. I'm totally looking forward to it. And by the way, after I met uh, Tyrone Smorgasborg, I checked out his channel, The Rhone Zone. Saw a lot of fun stuff on it, and this is sure to be a fun video. So what are we gonna see today? Well, we're gonna check out the craziness on the boardwalk. We're gonna check out all the high-class shopping there on Abbott Kinney. And then we're gonna take you to the canals. Yeah, and the canals are really cool. I was in Venice maybe five or six times before I even knew these existed. And Venice Beach was actually modeled after Venice, Italy. These are like some Italian canals. They're really cool. All right, let's go. Yeah, let's do it. So we're gonna start our tour at the end of West Washington Boulevard at the foot of the Venice Beach Pier. Why? Because this is one of the best places to park. There's a really big parking lot. You just take this street all the way to the beach and you're here and there's this great pier. It's Tyrone, why do you like this pier? I love this pier because you get a whole like panoramic view of everything. Over there you got the Palisades, you see the mountains over there, Santa Monica, you head down that way, you got Manhattan Beach, and you got all that beauty. And over there you have the Catalina Islands. So you can see everything from here. It's pretty cool. That's cool. Where are we heading next? Well, I think we're gonna head north and we're gonna check out some of the little uh, little activities up here. I think we're gonna see the, the uh, paddle tennis courts. How about that? So as we walk from the pier towards the main crazy heart of Venice, we walk through Venice's residential area, these really quaint streets. Tyrone, how much do houses here cost, do you think? Well, I would say on average around 20 to 30 million dollars. Cheap, so this is pretty cheap. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely cheap. So yeah. save up all so, your pennies. Yeah. So this purple house and this house with the lookout tower, are, are there a story behind these really interesting houses? As a matter of fact, yes, there is, Chris. This house, this purple home you see here, the residents actually had the house painted purple so they could see their house on television and film because they film out here all the time. And who doesn't want to watch a TV show and say, hey, look, there's my purple house. Right. What about this house with the lookout tower? It okay. looks like a lifeguard tower. Yes, exactly. So this house right here was designed by the famous architect Frank Gehry. And there's actually a, a semi-famous director who lives there. And apparently he just wanted the lookout tower built because he wanted to just catch out catch all the views at night. And if you look on the outside, it almost looks like bath tile, but it's a really cool design. And it's one of the many cool houses you'll see here on Venice. And I also want to point out that lookout tower has a chandelier in it. Yes, it does. High class. So that was the quiet residential zone we were in and it's now starting to get louder. Tell me about this building we see here. Well guys, right here is sort of the beginning of all the businesses. We went from residential to businesses. This is It's Sugar. You can get your candy fix there. But what I really want to show you are the paddle tennis courts right over there. Okay, so we continue to get louder and louder. Here it kind of sounds like machine guns are shooting, but I think we're not getting shot at. Tyrone, what's that sound? I hope it's not <laughs> machine guns. That is the sound of paddle tennis, as you can see behind us. Paddle tennis is essentially the same as tennis. There's a couple rules that are a little different, but of course, as you can see, these guys are using paddles, not the traditional rackets you see in tennis. And if somebody came here and wanted to play, do they have to pay or how does it work? It's absolutely free. However, you do need to obviously bring your own equipment with the exception of a guy I met the other day named Mitch who sells the equipment. So you may be able to find that kind of deal, but for the most part, bring your own stuff, but it is free to play. It's cool. And I think that's one of the coolest parts about Venice. Lots of things in LA cost you money. You go to Disneyland and Universal Studios, that'll cost you $100 a day. You come down to Venice and there's all this free stuff. All right, what are we gonna see next? Well, I said we go ahead that way and check out the muscle part of the beach. Muscle Beach. He'll be showing you the muscles, not me. All right, let's go. So here we are at Muscle Beach, here in the bleachers, looking down at all the action. I would say that the gun show isn't here, but more like over there. 
So, can, like, can we go in there and lift weights, or how does this place work? As a matter of fact, Chris, you can. And it doesn't matter who you are. You could be the weakest guy on the beach. For $10 a day, you can work out where Arnold Schwarzenegger, Danny Trejo, all the greatest uh, actors and, and muscle guys have been. Also, uh, if you guys are interested in a monthly pass, it's $20. 20 so you, bucks? Yeah. 20 bucks for a month? Exactly. Yeah. So you know where I'm going to be right. this summer. <laughs> All right, working out. Yeah. And I guess this wasn't the original Muscle Beach though, right? Like This was not. The original Muscle Beach started just a little north over there, just south of the Santa Monica Pier where all the top acrobats and just physical specimens started in the 1930s. This was built in 1952, I believe. And that's where these guys also were working out, working on their tans and their muscles. Yeah, I remember Arnold Schwarzenegger would always say that what he liked about this place was he could work out and get a tan at the same time, so you can get both in. That's cool. So Tyrone, these bleachers also look like a really great place to check out everything else from a bird's eye view. What are we looking at out here? Well, if we look over here, obviously we're looking at the Muscle Beach, so you can check out the guys working out over there. Over here we have a great place. We've got some rings, a little workout area. You want to do some pull-ups, some dips. Of course, it's free. Anyone's allowed in here. You can see that. You got the beach over there. And if you look a little more to the right, you got some handball courts. And then if you pull it a little more to the right even more, you got the basketball courts, which are called the Venice Ball Courts. Actually, if you come here on Sundays at 9 o'clock, they offer clinics at 9 and 12 where they have some of the top coaches and basketball players here to help you play some basketball. That's cool. Can they help me dunk? Chris, I don't know if there's anyone that can help you dunk. All right, well, maybe they can't help me dunk, but can I just play on these courts? Yeah, you can play pretty much on any court, with the exception of that court over there, where a lot of times that's where, like, the ex-college basketball players and the more skilled guys go. The one closest to the boardwalk. The one closest to the boardwalk. That's not for us. That is not for us. We are probably... The one closer to the beach. Yes. The one in the beach. The one in the sand. Cl what about this court right here? There's this one court that's blue. What's going on here today? Well, this is a tournament they're doing right now. It looks like a three-on-three -three tournament. They only do this on the weekends. Usually during the week, you could actually play basketball here. But of course, today they're doing a specific tournament. They got music, they got all kinds of events going on and all these people checking it out. It's pretty cool stuff. So Tyrone, I noticed that we're not walking on the boardwalk where everybody else is. We're kind of walking a little inland a little more. Why are we not walking over there? Well, for one, there's a lot of really cool things that you wouldn't notice from there as you would from here. For example, over here we've got little skateboarding demonstrations. If you go more over there, almost all the time they have these guys doing roller skate tricks and they've got like boom boxes. And a lot of people are just having little picnics in the actual grass areas and just checking it out. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I feel like as a tourist, it's really easy to come to Venice and be attracted like a moth to the flame and just stick on the boardwalk. Yeah. But get off the boardwalk, because you know, it's everywhere Tyrone's shown us is like not on the boardwalk. It's the stuff between the boardwalk and the ocean. So on our way to the skate park, we had to cross the bicycle path here in Venice Beach. There's two boardwalks. There's the boardwalk that you walk on, and there's the boardwalk that you bike and skateboard on. But Tyrone, a lot of people say this is a good place to ride a bike. What do you say? I would say 100% no, unless you have really good health insurance because there are people darting in and out of this place and I tell you what, it's like a really crazy game of frogger out here, let me tell you. So we're here at the skate park, Roan, you were skating in at the beginning, have you skated in here? No, I have not because I leave this to the professionals. Let me tell you, this place has had anyone from Tony Hawk, Steve Caballero, to some of the new school guys like Ryan O'Neill and Andy Anderson. Those guys are top notch and this is where they perfect some of those skills and become these world class skaters. Yeah, these are really impressive skateboarders. If you like skating and you don't just want to like see it on TV or on YouTube, come here and check it out. Okay, so we're walking inland now, away from the skate park. What are we going to check out now, Roan? Well, we're going to check out this really cool mural on the other side of this building over here. This this mural? On, the mural that yeah, says Venice? On the, actually, on the other side of that. The other side of it. On the other side of that mural. Okay, see you on the other side. Yeah, see you on the other side. Come on. So yeah, uh, gang, right here we have a mural. This mural was done by a gentleman named Jonas Never. He actually completed this in 2012. He's a local artist. Uh, he basically replicated this from a film called Touch of Evil by Orson Welles. So the most interesting thing I thought about that mural was I realized standing there that that mural is a mural of this street. The Venice sign in that mural, that's that Venice sign right there. And these buildings, those are like the buildings that are in there, is that right? That is very true. This is actually replicated to that mural which came from that film itself. So it's interesting. I've never been in a place where I've seen a mural 
of the street that I've been standing on. But 60 years ago, when this was like, much more like Venice. Now, if you look this way, it's not all Venetian anymore. Now it's become a bunch of cheap restaurants, bars, and bike rentals. Well, actually, Chris, they're not all necessarily cheap restaurants. You just kind of have to know where to look sometimes. And right here, I sort of have this diamond in the rough, if you will, a relic, sort of a staple to Venice since 1915. It is the oldest bar west of Los Angeles here, downtown Los Angeles. It is called the Townhouse bar uh, you can check out some really cool upscale jazz stuff they have really awesome cocktails you don't want to just walk in there and short so this intersection the intersection of windward and pacific this is the center of venice beach with the venice sign if you were just to put venice beach in google maps this is where you would come to the reason why we didn't tell you to start this tour here this brings you into a huge traffic snarl but uh roan hey if people want to take a picture with that venice sign What's the best way to do that? Well, I would say get here early because as you can see where the sun is, if you get a photo of the sign, it's really backlit. You don't get a nice clear vision of the sign itself. So come here in the morning and then get your selfie. Um, and in the meantime, I think we're gonna go and check out some more high-end shopping areas just a few blocks down that way. Come along, guys. And weren't you telling me you really like the smoothies from Windward Farms? How could I forget? Windward Farms has the best smoothies. You would never suspect that some little deli mart right there would have the best smoothies, but they really do. You guys check it out and go get yourself one today. Hashtag not sponsored. His favorite, though. And how far is Abikini from here? I would say about six blocks. Six blocks? Hey, hold on. I want to pet the puppy. Oh, Chris, don't. It's a, it's a stuffed puppy. Chris, if you thought that was weird, take a look at this car. I, uh, I think I'm trespassing. You kids, get off my lawn! <laughs> okay, so we're here on Abbott Kinney Boulevard. This is Venice's most high-end set of shops. And if you thought the Venice Beach Boardwalk was just about cheap t-shirts and sunglasses, well, here you can get things that aren't cheap. This store, Aesop, specializes in this lotion this is a tangerine rind lotion. Mm. Ron, how much is this lotion if, if we wanted to get a bottle of this? Really expensive, but at least it's yellow. It's like $60 plus for this lotion. Sweet, could you get the neck? <laughs> Chris, Yeah. hey, guess hey, what? What? There are some really cool shops here, very eclectic, and they're so eclectic. unique. For example, there's yeah. a place over here called Tom's uh -huh. where not only can you buy a really nice pair of sunglasses, some really cool shoes, but they also have a coffee shop where you can sit there and hang out. Yeah, and what's most interesting, where do you drink the coffee? You drink the coffee inside sitting next to the shoes and they've almost got like a little park back there. So come to Abikini to check out some really unique places. These are the kinds of shops you won't see anywhere else. They're definitely like the flagship stores on Abikini. All right, so Abikini Boulevard, the business district basically ends right about here in Venice Boulevard. But I think, Ron, it looks like we're in front of Lemonade. You were telling me you really like this place. What do you like about Lemonade? Well, the first thing I love about it is it's the same color as your shirt. Oh, I do love that. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> but the other part about it is I love the fact that you have a lot of fresh uh, options. That it's, it's, The food is actually good for you here. Um, and you can kind of choose as many options as you like, but you can get like truffle mac and cheese. Where can you get truffle mac and cheese anywhere else? I don't know. And the truffle mac and cheese, it's really good. Okay, but where are we going now? Well, guys, I think we're going to head down this way and check out some of these really interesting canals. Okay, so we're going to go down Venice Boulevard yeah. to the canals of Venice. We'll see you guys at the canals. So we went about three blocks down Venice. We hung left on Ocean Avenue, two blocks on there, turn right, and we're here at the canals. Rome, tell us about these canals. Yeah, so this is one of the seven canals from the original. Uh, the rest of them were filled in in like 1927. So, so, Venice, so Venice had way more canals than this originally. Way more yeah. than this, yes. Ahead. And um, they actually, the water comes in from the Marina del Rey, which is a little east from here. And you could actually see some of the canals from Washington Street itself from where we started. Well, and I, and I feel like this, like these canals are like a world away from the rest of Venice. And, and when you come here, you can really see Abbot Kinney's original vision of, and I'll call your attention to look this way, his original vision of a Venice by the sea here, right? People have boats, it's quiet, it's quaint. 
truly an awesome spot. So Roan, so if people are coming to Venice Beach, how long do you think uh, tourists should spend here? We started this at noon and it's about five o'clock, but uh, how, how long should other people spend? Well, I guess, I mean, we saw quite a bit of stuff for the, the few hours you've been out here. But uh, if you really want to participate in all the stuff and really get a good feel for it, I would say a good solid maybe three, four days would really kind of cover it, I think. All in Venice or for LA proper? I would say just in Venice. LA is a little too spread out to just do it in three or four days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, and if you're coming to Venice, there's some other nearby areas like Santa Monica. Um, you can check out other things in West Hollywood that are pretty central to this. I think one of the things people try to do when they come to LA is they're like, I've got three days and I want to see all of LA, and that's hard. So take it from a local who says, spend your time in a little area and really get to know it. Uh, but so what's interesting about Roan is he's lived all around the world, lots of different places, and he's been in here, LA for five years. So Roan, what initially attracted you to LA? Well, I think aside from the fact that I lived in a lot of rainy areas and snowy areas in <laughs> yeah. my life, we kind of got this mono season thing going on, which is pretty cool. Don't get me wrong, every now and then I do desire a little rain cloud. But for the most part, I could do away with the rain and I have the sunshine. Another thing is, being that LA is so large and spread out, it's almost as if you're in a different like world every city you go to in this place. You can be in almost different countries. You could be in the beach, you could be in the mountains. It's such an eclectic and diverse uh, city that I, I, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. I want to discover all that in that one area and you just can't get it anywhere else. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And, and so that's what attracted you here. With now, now that you've been here for five years, what's your favorite part of it? My favorite part of it, I guess, just depends on what mood I'm in. If I'm going for like a nightlife type of thing, West Hollywood is really happening, you guys. It's really where it's at. No matter who you are, West Hollywood is a great spot to hang out. As far as food and things, I really love Chinatown. I also love Koreatown. I think they also, I, I mean, I'm a fan of Asian cuisine, so I guess there's a little bias there. But uh, I would definitely say those are my favorite areas. Yeah, and, very, uh, yeah. very cool. Yeah. Well, hey, if you want to check out more of Roan, links in the description below to the Roan Zone channel. If you want to see more from Los Angeles, you can click some of these links around here to my playlist on Los Angeles. Or if you want to see the video where I first met Roan in the Smorgasbord LA, that's linked up here and down in the description as well. Well, we won't say goodbye because we'll see you in one of those videos.